thank you again for tuning in to one of our Facebook Lives. Today we'll actually be doing a patient spotlight on one of our oldest patients. She's actually been here the longest out of all of the patients at the hospital. Her name is Santo Tilly. So I'm currently in our hospital. Sea Turtle Inc. is a nonprofit organization and Sea Turtle Hospital here in South Padre Island, Texas. My name is Rachel. I'm one of the environmental educators here. And we've been doing these videos every other day to try to teach you a little bit more about our organization. We also are aware we're close to the public, right? So you can't come in person to see these turtles, but we're hoping that by these videos, you're able to tune in, learn a little bit about sea turtles, and escape just for a little bit by watching these majestic animals. So today's patient spotlight, as I mentioned, is on Santo Tilly. Santo is also our largest patient at the hospital. She came in at 53 pounds. She stranded in April of last year, April 19th of 2019. So she's been here for almost a full year with us rehabilitating. Why has she been here this long? It's because she actually came in with a boat strike. When she was found, she was actually struggling to dive out in the bay. So a member of the public actually called us in and said, hey, you know, there's this turtle that's struggling to dive out in the bay. They were able to actually rescue Tilly and called us. We picked up Tilly and what we saw were some really interesting things. First, she actually had an entanglement on her left front flipper and then she actually had three separate propeller strikes on her shell so that allowed us to deduce that she was struck by a boat now this wound was actually not fresh she had an old one we could tell because the bone was dead in certain parts and I'm actually gonna show you some photos of when she first came in and then I'll switch it over to what Tilly looks like right now if you saw our post earlier, you were able to see what she looked like during intake. She was covered in algae. She had some barnacles on her and that wound looked pretty crazy. So I'm going to turn the camera around, show you one of those photos, and then I'll keep talking about Tilly and her patient history here at the hospital. You won't see my face, but I'll be chatting about her. And if you have any questions, you can type them into the comment box and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about our sea turtles as well as Tilly. So let me turn this around once. So this is what Tilly looked like when she first came in. So you can see she has those propeller strikes on her shell and she was covered in sand and algae. This was what she looked like right after her first bath. So whenever our turtles come in, we give them a bath to kind of clean them off and that'll allow us to actually examine those wounds without the interference of all this sand and algae. Tilly's actually right over here on the other side of the tank. I'm gonna walk around so you can see her a little bit better. And what you'll see is that Tilly has made a huge improvement. Great things are happening here for Tilly. So as I mentioned, she came in in April of last year. And in July, we were able to actually get a CT scan done the CT scan is great because it allows us to actually see inside the body, right? It's not just a 2D image like our x-ray machine. It allows us to see how her body suffered from this boat strike. But something else that's very special about Tilly is that she has something that we call, now this is a pretty big word, but I'll explain what it means in a second. She has fibropapillomatosis. Fibropapillomatosis is a disease that affects sea turtles worldwide. Now it predominantly affects Atlantic green sea turtles or any green sea turtle species we find. So she's actually an Atlantic green sea turtle and she's still a juvenile. So she's only about eight to 10 years old and this disease affects this age group and this species the most. We do know a lot about fiber papillomatosis, but there's also a lot we don't know. There's many studies being done on how it's actually transmitted from animal to animal and the source, right? So there's a lot of theories. One of the conclusions that has been made is that this is a multifactorial disease, right? So it's not just one factor that affects it. There are many factors that have to come together for it to affect an animal. So Tilly in July actually had tumor removal surgery for this disease 
because this disease causes tumors to grow all over the body. Now these are benign tumors, but as you can imagine, it does affect most of their life, right? Because if they have tumors that are crowding their eyes, it makes it difficult to see. Some of these tumors can get very, very large, so it makes it difficult for them to swim, to eat. Their lives are completely affected by this disease. Now, luckily, when Tilly came in, we give them a grade based on how many tumors they have, right? So how much of their body is covered by tumors, and her grade was a one out of three. So on the lower end, which is really good, and so after that surgery, we remove the tumors, and what you'll notice, all those tumors are gone. So they actually haven't grown back, which is great, because we think that stress is one of the things that contributes to the growth of these tumors. And if they're in the hospital, right, they're in captivity, we can suspect that they're under a little bit of stress, and so it would cause these tumors to grow. So luckily for Tilly, her tumors have not grown back, and that's a really, really great sign. But not only did she have this disease, right, this fibropapillomatosis, she also had this boat strike. Now I know that wound still looks pretty crazy, but great things have happened. Her body has filled in that wound with scar tissue, which is exactly what we want, because you'll notice she's actually at the bottom of the tank right now. So if I kind of pan my camera up, you'll see she's at the bottom of the tank. When she first came in, she was fully floating around the tank. This happens because sea turtles that are struck by boats develop buoyancy issues. When the boat strikes into their shell, there's now holes into their shell. So air will get trapped under there and it causes them to have problems getting around. So the person who found Tilly struggling to dive out in the bay, it was because of that buoyancy issue that she developed due to that boat strike. Now she's now resting the, the bottom of their tank, which is really exciting for us because as I mentioned for a while, she was floating. When she first came in, she was barely moving. She had no energy. She didn't eat for a really long time. She actually waited so long to eat that we tube fed her. We don't always have to tube feed our patients. It's something we don't like to do because it stresses out the animal as well as it's very stressful for us. But the day after that we too fed Tilly, she actually began regularly eating. So that was great for her. She's kind of maintained her weight around that 50 pound mark. As I mentioned, she is a juvenile still. She's only about eight to 10 years old. And so she's still got a lot of growing to do. Now recently in February, our vet, Dr. Tom came in and examined this animal closely to kind of see how that wound had healed over time. We've received very good news from our vet. He suspects that Tilly will be ready for release really, really soon. So we're expecting to release her in the next month or so. She's healed great. She's been here almost a year, as I mentioned. So we're really, really excited for Tilly. She's been a great, great patient. And she's suffered through a lot, right? Imagine not only having a disease that causes tumors to grow all over your body, but also to survive a boat strike. And she still is perked up a little tiny bit. You can see her back end of her shell is a little bit perked up. And that's probably just because that wound isn't fully, fully sealed. But we continuously will clean this wound, debride it, which just means taking out that dead tissue. And it's looking really, really great. So all really good things that are happening for Tilly. If you guys have any questions about boat strike patients or Tilly, please let me know. I'll keep talking about her because there's so much since she's been here for over a year. But if you have any questions about her specifically, let me know. If you're interested in adopting Tilly, so you can actually sponsor each patient in our hospital on our website, which is seaturtleinc.org. We have an adoptions page and you can choose to sponsor Tilly directly. Someone asked if they have swim bladders like fish do. Uh, they do not. They do not have swim bladders, but they do have lungs on the bottom part of their shell that kind of help regulate their movement, right? So they're actually holding their breath when they're underwater, which is pretty crazy to think about. These animals can hold their breath for hours. Something else that's interesting about Tilly is you'll notice we have this PVC pipe kind of box over here. People ask us all the time, what their function is, 
It's actually so she can scratch her shell. She has a very sensitive shell. All turtles have sensitive shells, but Tilly in particular loves scratching her back, so she'll kind of prop herself under there, take naps, and wiggle herself back and forth scratching on that pipe. As well as over here, we have our intake um, and different valves around the tank, and she scratches herself on them. How old is Tilly? Tilly, we can only estimate based on their shell size, but we think she's about eight to 10 years old. Now something funny about Tilly is our patients can actually get a little bit picky with their diet. So Tilly will eat squid, she'll eat mackerel, but just this morning she left the shrimp that we offered her. So she's become actually a little bit picky with what she eats. She also really enjoys the lettuce bars we offer them uh, every afternoon, as well as other veggies. Gonna move over here to this side so you can see her a little bit better. She's coming up for a breath, it looks like. Or maybe just swimming around. There she is. You can see that wound pretty closely now. You'll also notice she's got a gorgeous shell Atlantic green sea turtles have what we call a sunburst pattern on their shell. And as you can see, she has that, that brown coloration, a little bit of yellow in there. And they're called Atlantic green sea turtles not because their shells are green, but because of what they eat. So out in the wild, they eat algae, they eat seagrass, they love munching on those things. So it actually turns their fat green. Their shells aren't actually green. So this says, Liliana wants to know how big sea turtles can get. So they can actually grow, it depends on the species, but Atlantic green sea turtles can actually grow to over, uh, around 500 pounds or so. So they kind of max out around 500 pounds, but adults can weigh a couple hundred pounds. We have a few resident sea turtles. Jerry, for example, he weighs around 220 pounds, but he's still got some growing to do as well. She's a little more active right now. She's often taking naps, but she seems to be moving around a little bit. They actually took her out recently to do some more debridement. So you can actually see the areas in her shell where they were kind of picking at, taking out some of that dead tissue. Someone asked how much uh, adoptions are to be a sponsor. So it depends if you're doing a patient adoption, a resident adoption, or a hatchling adoption. We have three different types, but if you go on our website, it'll show you each kind and what the price is. Truly a beautiful animal. We're really excited that she'll be released soon. As I mentioned, she's been here almost a full year, which is a pretty long time. So with that, I'll wrap up this Facebook Live. If you have any questions, please type them into the comments below. I'll be on for a couple of minutes after the live as well as later on tonight to answer any questions you might have about Santo, Tilly, or any of our patients, anything like that. So if you have any questions, please type them. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. It really does mean a lot. We love doing these Facebook Lives. It allows us to share our passions and our hospital here right in person so this is a really really great thing for us to be able to do thank you so much for continuing to support us we are a nonprofit organization so your support means everything to us i'll see you in two days so today is monday correct yes i think i have my days correct well in two days we'll be doing another facebook live that facebook live will actually be on allison one of our resident sea turtles so if you've been wondering what allison is up to Tune in for that live. It'll be in two days at 1 p.m. Central. If you can't catch us during that time slot, don't worry. We always upload our videos afterwards to our Facebook page. Thank you so, so much, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.